Hello and welcome to Karen Reads. Hi boys and girls. I have a spooky book today called Beware of the Crocodile. It's written by Martin Jenkins, who's written many books for kids. He is a conservation biologist, which is somebody who studies life and living things. So that's how he knows what to write about crocodiles. Satoshi Kitumara is the illustrator, and he won the Mother Goose Award for the most exciting newcomer to British illustrations a few years ago. Okay, here we go. If there's one thing you should know about crocodiles, it's that they're really scary, or at least the big ones are. They've got an awful lot of teeth. They're not at all picky about what they eat, as long as it's got a bit of meat on it. When it comes to hunting down their dinner, they're very determined and very cunning. They know all the places along the sides of the rivers and lakes where animals come down to drink. When it's time for a meal, a hungry crocodile will choose one of those places and hide there in the water, just under the surface, with only the top of its head sticking out. Sooner or later, something passing by, something with a bit of meat on it, will decide that it's thirsty and needs a drink, and then You can see just the top of the crocodile's head sticking out. And then there'll be a sudden lunge and a tremendous splash. And then, oh dear. What happens next is rather gruesome. In fact, it's so gruesome that we should skip the details. Let's just say there's a lot of twirling and thrashing, and then things go a bit quiet. Afterward, the cro crocodile won't need to feed again for a while. Instead, it spends its time cruising around, checking out places where it might find its next meal, or snoozing on the sandbank. Crocodiles can go for weeks and weeks without eating. The bigger a crocodile's meal, the longer it can go before the next one. This guy knows his crocodiles. which are different than alligators. You can have your parents look up the difference. But there's more to crocodiles than splash, snap, twirl, swallow. You might be surprised to hear that they are very good parents, or mothers, we should say. We'll talk about the fathers later. When she's ready to lay some eggs, a mother crocodile gathers up a huge mound of fallen leaves. She scoops out a hollow in the top, lays her eggs there, and covers them with leaves. As the leaves rot, they heat up, keeping the eggs nice and warm. The mother can adjust the heat by piling up more leaves or scraping some away. A crocodile usually lays 40 to 60 eggs at one time, 
but a big one can lay up, up to as many as 90. Inside the eggs, the baby crocodiles are slowly growing. When they're nearly ready to hatch, they start chirping away like tiny birds. That's a signal for the mother to open up the nest. It takes 80 to 90 days for the eggs to be ready to hatch. Very carefully, she picks up the newly hatched babies in her enormous jaws and drops them in the water nearby. She still doesn't leave the babies on their own though. She stands guard over them in the water for months. You see, lots of things like to eat baby crocodiles. Birds such as storks and herons, snakes, big fish, and worst of all. Other crocodiles, sometimes even the baby crocodiles' own fathers. That's why the mother keeps an eye on them. Despite the mother's best efforts, a lot of babies meet an unfortunate end. But the ones that survive grow and grow and grow until one day they're the ones lurking in the water by that place on the bank with only their eyes and nose sticking out. Waiting for something or even somebody to come down to drink. Don't let that be you. You're smarter than that now. Okay. Good to be with you. Take care till next time.